What's up guys, it's Ran here. I believe that you should be completely out of the mainstream US stock market before the coming elections. Uh, I think this is a very important video and I will elaborate why I'm saying that. I will elaborate why I am right now 100% into the commodity space. I think commodities are extremely cheap right now. If you follow this channel, you also know that I'm uh, very big into gold and silver. I think they are very cheap right now. I think with the uncertainty um, and the possibility of currency devaluation and a stock market crash, I think that is the best place to be. And uh, I, I am very heavily into physical gold and silver, uh, more to the silver side because I want to take more risk and I'm uh, willing uh, to take the higher volatility in silver, but I also have gold mining stocks. Gold, what are mining stocks? Mining stocks are companies that extract uh, gold or silver from uh, the ground. I think they're going to be the biggest beneficiaries to the next uh, a few years, two, three, four years. And that's why I'm holding them. But I, I'm not only, of course, into uh, gold and silver. As I said, I'm 100% into commodities. I also have gas, uh, natural gas companies. I have uh, oil companies. And uh, I have a small location into foreign dividend paying stocks. I am not in uh, tech stocks. I'm not in the financials. Even though I'm looking on some Israeli banks, they are uh, down something like 60% uh, since, uh, since the start of the year. But since mortgages have been pushed back, people didn't have to pay uh, the mortgages in Israel. I think that the worst is yet to come. And uh, once I think, I think they have more to go down, I, I will maybe look on some financial stocks. Uh, even that I'm not, uh, I, I think they are getting cheap. So if you follow this channel, you know, I'm always telling you, we don't buy expensive stocks or expensive anything in hope that they're going higher. We want to buy cheap and we want to sell high. So um, even that I said before on this channel a few times, I think the stock market is going higher because I think the Fed will come in. I think there will be massive stimulus and I think we are going to see a melt up before the crash. I'm not certain of that. Uh, so that's why I'm not betting on that because I'm not certain on that. But I think it's a very high probability. We will see tech stocks and, and, and mainstream stocks go higher before they crash. Uh, I'm not certain of that. And that's not how I play. I, wanna, I don't want to play this game of buying something that I know is expensive, that I know it's overvalued, because I think in one month or in half a year, it will be even more expensive and I can sell it for a profit. That's not the way that I want to invest. I want to invest in things that are cheap. Maybe they will even get cheaper <laughs> in the short term. I don't know. I bought some gold stocks um, in September. They were higher than now. I'm down on these stocks, but they were cheap in September and they are still cheap now. They are even cheaper now. But in the long term, I think they're going to get um, much, much more expensive. They may even get into some kind of a bubble, hopefully, so <laughs> I can sell in uh, uh, extreme prices. And um, uh, that's where I am right now. Uh, I want to buy things on that when they are cheap. Now, with the US elections, either Trump wins or Biden wins. If Trump wins, and either, either way, we are going to see a complete chaos in the streets, we are going to see riots, we are going to see uh, if Trump uh, wins, don't think that the left uh, is going to let this uh, pass without riots. And I think we are going to see extreme riots. In 2016, when the, it was announced that Trump won, I remember that I saw videos on YouTube some leftist people were crying, they were shouting. One particular woman, uh, it was a very famous video. Uh, look at it right now. Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President Obama. For what a great honor address. to be able to introduce for the first time ever. These people are not going to be so nice this year. If Trump wins the 2020 elections, these people are going to riot. They're going to make Balagan, they're going to loot stores. We are already having more than 150 days straight uh, with riots in Portland and other U.S. cities. People are looting stores, they are destroying small businesses. The U.S. economy is not in a good state. Also, the global economy is not in a good, in a good state. But uh, this election is going for sure to cause uh, trouble. If uh, Trump loses, as he already said, he believes there is going to be uh, uh, cheating. The Democrats are going to cheat in the elections. I don't know if that's true or not. There have been already proven that uh, uh, um, that with these ballots, uh, they have been uh, they have been cheating before. So Trump is not going to accept that. He's not going to. He already said he's not going to uh, make it a clear transition. Who knows where it's going to go? 
Uh, and again, if he wins, I think it's even worse uh, in terms of riots, in terms of uh, um, looting in the street and, and, and all of the, the things that will come with it. And that, is, that cannot be stock market positive. So in the short term, I feel very comfortable where I am right now. I don't want to be in the mainstream stocks. I think uh, it's dangerous and uh, it's very comfortable to be in uh, hedges like gold and silver and mining stocks and to weather this storm. Um, what is interesting that we saw yesterday, uh, this entire week was one of the worst weeks for the US stock market. And yesterday was a big down day, uh, uh, especially for the tech stocks. Twitter have gone down more than 20%, uh, uh, Facebook and uh, uh, Microsoft. Microsoft didn't went down so much, but Facebook, uh, also the, the companies like that, they went down a lot. But what is interesting that money didn't leave the, uh, the, the equity market and went into the bond market. So people didn't go from equities into debt because the debt market, the bond market also went down. Interest rate went up. This is a very interesting environment. Money left equity market, but it also left the bond market. So where did that money go? I also saw that the, uh, the DXY went down a little bit. So it's still uncertain. Uh, and uh, this is uh, normally there is the 60-40 portfolio uh, where you have 60% stocks and 40% bonds. And uh, in theory, when stocks go down, this should be an uh, inversely correlated asset. So when stocks go down, bonds should go up. And when bonds go down, the stocks should go up. So you should never be uh, uh, losing way too much. You should have some, some defense in, in that 60-40 portfolio. But uh, if you are in 60-40 portfolio yesterday, you got decimated in stocks and you also went down uh, less, but you also went down in bonds. Uh, I think the bond market is even more overvalued than the stock market right now. And uh, um, I think uh, it's, it's, it's not a hedge against stocks. The only hedge right now that I see is either if you're short the market, but I think that is extremely dangerous because we have the, un, uh, you know, you, we have a variable that is the Fed. You know that they can uh, make big changes. And when you go short stocks, you go long dollars. So you, your Fed is promising to destroy the value of the dollar. Who knows if there is going to be a, a, a fast drop in, uh, in the dollar, uh, you may lose your, your short. Because the dollar may go down more than the stock, and the stock may go up in, in, in uh, nominal terms. So, I don't like shorting. I like to short the market by being long uh, commodities. The commodities are in all-time lows, and bonds, bonds are in all-time high. Actually, interest rates right now are in 5,000 years uh, low. And if interest rates are in 5,000 years lows, because what happened is, when interest rate is going down, the price of the bond is going up. That means that the bond price is in 5,000 year highs. I don't want to be in bonds. I mean, some deflationist uh, uh, people, in the deflationist camp, they say bonds are going to go higher. But you know what? Even they say they're going to go higher in the short term. I'm not playing the short term game. I'm looking longer. And we both agree, inflationist and deflationist, that in the longer term, uh, uh, the bond market is uh, overvalued. You can see people like uh, Jeffrey Grandlock who are saying that, uh, and he also uh, talked positively about uh, uh, gold and silver. Lastly, I wanna show you guys some uh, charts that I took from Twitter from Otavio Costa. He's a portfolio manager from Brazil. He has amazing charts, uh, amazing information. You should follow him on Twitter. Uh, I encourage you. And uh, I think it will prove to you everything that I have said previously, and it will show how concerning uh, the situation is, and also um, how cheap commodities are, how cheap uh, uh, silver is, and uh, uh, you will see where you should be. So as we can see, the commodities to GDP ratio by Bloomberg, we can see that commodities are in all-time low for the last 60 years, uh, and that is why I'm 100% in commodities. Also, we can see that the gold miners versus the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is in all time highs, uh, while um, if we look on the, the gold mining index, uh, we are cheap right now. And uh, this uh, graph shows in uh, 1973 to 1974, how uh, within two years, S&P halved, while the gold stocks, they went up five times. Also, we can see that the gold mining with the Dow Jones, in the Great Depression, so this was a deflationary environment, uh, stocks were decimated, and uh, in the same time, again, gold was the place to be, so uh, 
either if we are in an inflationary environment like the 70s or a deflationary environment like the 30s, uh, gold act as a hedge, as, an, as a, a wealth protection in both scenarios. And uh, that's why I'm betting on gold, uh, including uh, on other commodities. This is a, a more technical a gold to S&P ratio. This chart shows that uh, uh, this is a, a technical uh, chart that shows that uh, um, the graph is supposed to shoot up from here. So basically gold is supposed to get much more expensive compared to the S&P 500. Um, this is another interesting graph that shows that the uh, home builder sentiment is in all time highs. These uh, things that are in all time highs are generally not good indications, especially in the situation that we are right now. It doesn't make much sense. I mean, I've made a video about the housing. You can check it out. There is reasons. I think people want to move out to the countryside. They want more freedom. They don't want to be in the cities where the, it's crowded with, with this surveys sickness. So there is reasons. But still, when things are in all-time highs like that, it's concerning. And uh, we should keep an eye on that. Things are not uh, in a V-shape recovery like uh, the mainstream media are trying to tell us. Now, uh, the money supply, this fiscal deficit, this is shouting all over it. A currency debasement. What is a currency debasement? Basically, within one day, they will decide that your currency is worth less. For example, they will say, from today, uh, they want to debase, uh, uh, let's say, the dollar uh, versus commodities. So from today, um, gold is not uh, $1,900 an ounce. From today, it's $8,000 an ounce. And uh, in that environment, immediately, the price of oil will go up, the price of silver will go up, with the price of all the commodities will go up. Uh, uh, that is a currency devaluation. Uh, it already happened before um, uh, when they took uh, the gold from, I think it was uh, $22, uh, $22 for one ounce of gold. They took it to 35 um, That was in the early 20th century. Uh, silver to money supply. Again, silver is a monetary metal. So uh, it should go up compared to the money supply. Right now, silver is extremely cheap compared to money supply. It's not as cheap as it was uh, in March, April, where uh, we had a record of 100 and a ratio between silver and gold, 125 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold. So we did go up from there, but still silver is extremely cheap. And that's why I have uh, I hold more physical silver than physical gold also because I like uh, that it's a, a smaller denomination and w one silver coin is uh, worth much less than one uh, a gold coin. And uh, if you take it to the extreme, if we get some, some uh, uh, really uh, shit uh, in the economy, let's say, and things are in, in a very bad state, if you need to barter for a, a small period of time, uh, then it's much easier to barter with silver because it's not worth so much like one uh, gold coin. One gold coin uh, is a lot of money. Uh, is, here is another interesting graph. You can see that uh, banks uh, are lending mainly to the government. There is way more uh, government, uh, you know, treasury holding than uh, uh, consumer loans and business loans. And uh, that is not a good indicator for a good, uh, you know, good economy. And there's more indication that, you know, government spending is not good, especially not in a recession. You want to lower government spending um, to help the economy, to help, you know, to, to relieve stress from the market. But you know what? It's even fake because we are not paying in taxes everything that the government spends because the government is printing most of the money uh, that it needs to uh, to spend. And I know deflationists will tell you QE is uh, uh, not adding liquidity to market because QE is only the, the, the Fed is taking bonds, you know, treasuries from the banks and it's giving them uh, uh, bank reserves. Uh, I think this is a distinction without a difference. I think that uh, it's the same as saying that if you buy um, a plane ticket and you pay money for the plane ticket and then, uh, you know, it was a business flight, and your company reimburse you for the flying ticket. So uh, first you pay for it from your money, and then later the, your uh, employer will give you the money, then you will say the employer didn't pay um, the flying ticket because you paid it, but the employer just reimburse you. So that is basically what's happening. The, the Fed is not buying treasuries directly from the government, it's buying them from the banks, but the end result is the same. If the Fed wasn't there, the banks wouldn't buy so many uh, treasuries because it doesn't make sense and there is a lot of risk involved 
and the, the market can be unliquid, but the Fed is making it liquid. So this is also uh, very interesting. U.S. consumer spending. Uh, so they say consumer spending is back. Yes, consumer spending is back to the uh, great financial re recession levels of 2008. I mean, the, the, we are right now after our recovery, we are back to the levels that we were in 2008, in the lowest point of 2008 of the great financial crisis. I, mean, I think it's, it's insane. Yeah, to think that there is any recovery and to bet on um, these overvalued uh, tech stocks and uh, mainstream sectors. Here is another interesting uh, graph that shows that we are in a bubble. Um, we are even in a bigger bubble than the dot-com bubble, which was uh, immense. Uh, the US tech store market cap to GDP, and uh, <laughs> we've actually passed it by 26% than uh, uh, the, the market cap to GDP of the um, dot-com bubble. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to promote my video so other people can watch it. It really helps the channel. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next video.